Well guys, since we have another summer successfully in the books, I am figured today we are going to be going through everything that really happened this summer. And we're going to really just let the video speak for themselves. These are going to be some of the greatest videos I uploaded this summer. And to be like a little bit more balanced between video essays and normal videos, because I know video essays are way better than my normal videos, I figured I'd include a mixture of both. And by the way, guys, before we get in, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I know this video is going to get no more than like 31 views, but I don't really care. So before we begin, I guess check that. But let's begin that. In this section, I will cover some relevant information about this subject matter. First of all, you will need a plan before going into this idea. You will first want to know where in your yard these chickens will be located. I would recommend an area that is away from the streets and in an area that has access to both sun and shade. You will want to make sure that if you have a garden that your chickens are not near the garden, or if you are going to free range them in your backyard, make sure that your garden is locked off from your chickens. Now that you have a plan, you will need to make sure that raising chickens is legal in your town. In some suburbs, you'll need to ask permission first, and in others, chickens are just flat out banned. So now that you know that if you can even own chickens in your backyard, I think it's time to move on to even more relevant information. Alright chickens, well, well, you know what we're going to do tomorrow? We're going to be going somewhere tomorrow. I have a big surprise for you tomorrow, but we have to get through the night before we can tell you exactly what that surprise is. So, just go to bed and pretend like nothing happened. This is going to be similar to what we did back in March. It's kind of like a vacation, but at the same time it kind of isn't. So that's kind of a little hint. Go to your room, get yourself like some bags prepared or something like that. So, I'll see you then. Alright, bye Miss Peepers. See you, BCT. All right, Ever BCT. since 2018, I've been living on this farm that, um, yeah, it's been quite the interesting journey if I don't say so myself. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you why this changed my life completely. And I'm going to be telling you the whole story, basically. If you want a little bit more information, you can check out the card linked above, which actually goes down throughout the whole story. But anyways, let's talk about this. By the way, 4K before August, I'll do a live stream every day. PSA, streams, streams will be an hour for of having this go. So as you know, we bought... For the last four years, I've raised chickens on our small, but yet still growing farm here on 26 acres of land in northwestern Connecticut. And eventually, we're gonna need something else. So in August 2020, we got some ducks, three of them. We were expected to get four. However, I guess either one of them died in delivery and they got rid of it, but which is very unlikely, or they just completely disregarded the other Rowan duck we were supposed to get. So we never got our second Rowan duck. And sadly, back in 2023, all three of them died in the span of six and a half months, one, two of them in January, the other one in July. But since then, we haven't really gotten anything new. So I have some brand new news. This morning, I started talking about this and we're gonna get some of these little poultry animals. Hopefully by the end of the summer, I'll make an update video regarding that, how many we're gonna get. So let's get into the basic- In early June of 2024, I was in my room. It was an ordinary Tuesday evening on the farm. I just got back from a workout and a long walk with my puppy up and down the block. At this point, the sun was pretty much completely set, so it meant that it was time for some work on my channels. I booted up the photo editor and played some music in the background while I uh, had the window open outside. It was, about only, it was only about 65 degrees that evening, and there was a nice light breeze in the air. This allowed me to hear everything that was going down outside, and that window would be the reason why my chickens survived that night. Now, cut to my chickens, and you could clearly see them settled in, the, in for the night. The only issue was that the door was wide open. And if you were looking at 85 feet behind the chicken coop, you could be able to see a, green, a pair of green eyes. Now, this part is speculation, but the next part sadly isn't as the raccoon had been eyeing down the bin, the feeding bin, but as soon as he saw the chicken coop door wide open, he must have thought, wow, that's a crazy opportunity. Because of the fact the door was wide open, he was able to walk in like it was just a normal door. Now the raccoon faced a problem. Which chicken did he want to take? On the floor, there was Rogue, who was a buff Orpington that was approximately three years old. But there were other options like Cute, who was in the nesting box, and Fluffball, who was on the lowest level of the roosting bar. But the raccoon chose Rogue. Now cut back to me, and I could hear a chicken in distress sound. I immediately sprang out of my chair and ran towards the chicken coops, wasting no time. And like any sane person in this scenario, I started to cuss out the raccoon. And only for a split second, I saw a pair of eyes in the yard. However, fortunately, my chicken rogue wasn't injured and appeared to have been grabbed by the tail, which is always the best case scenario in these types of situations. The raccoon didn't try to get anyone else for about, and, and for about 40 minutes after the situation, I just sat in my seat listening. 
Fortunately, everybody was just fine. After that night, I never forgot to shut the door in my rack. And now the raccoon target gets my trash can as well as the chicken feed, sadly. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday morning. You're going to be seeing this Tuesday evening when this goes up, hopefully. I'm going to be recording everything from right now. It's about 7.45 in the morning. All the way until, I'd say, like, probably around 8 p.m. I'll do the chicken snacks, so you can see the evening routine. But fortunately, somebody's already been out here to do the morning routine for us. So we're going to check on the pet flock. And as you guys probably know, we don't have a rooster in this flock anymore. So no more in the evening do I have to worry about ducking down and worrying about the rooster pecking at my hair. So now I can just go into the chicken coop without any concerns So for all. this, we'll need to gather all the materials that we're going to be needing for baby chickens. And also, buy some baby chickens as well. First things first, a brooder is a one-time purchase, along with heat lamps, waterers, and feeders. Everything else will be bought regularly. Baby chickens will also need four bags of shavings and two bags of feed to survive one singular month. But we're actually going to start off by buying the baby chickens first things first. But Fortingtons are roughly five US dollars, which means we'll be spending about fifteen dollars for three of them. Bard rocks are also five dollars, so we'll be spending also fifteen dollars on them. Easter eggers are seven dollars, so we'll be spending twenty-one dollars on them, and golden buffs are four dollars, so we will be spending twelve dollars on them. We're spending a total of sixty-three dollars on just buying the baby chickens alone. We can get a starters pack, which includes the brooder, heat lamp, waterers, and feeder for roughly one hundred and fifty dollars, which is pretty expensive, but it could be a whole lot worse. We're also going to need four parcels of shavings, which will be about $28 a month on, sh on shavings because they're each about $7 a piece at Tractor Supply, which is pretty expensive, but it's definitely a little bit less worse than the feed bags. We'll be most likely needing 50 pounds as they are most efficient, but even with that size of bag, we'll still regularly be going through two of those bags every single month. Each of them are $28, so we will be spending $56 per month on chick starter feed, which compared to the adult hen feed isn't that bad. You'll also need to replace the heat lamp bulb about once a month, which they usually go for about $10. All this being said, the first month is about $307, but if we include taxes, it would likely be a bit closer to $320 for just their first month. But don't worry, they do get just a bit cheaper as time progresses. And just like that, as I said, another summer in the books, and I'm looking forward to next summer already, to be honest with you guys. But before we're done with summer, I have a ton of things to announce, but I can't really do that in this video without it really going above the 8 minute time limit. So guys, I will be catching you guys in the next one. I will be seeing you tomorrow in tomorrow's big update video that you guys will absolutely love. So be sure to go down below, turn on those notifications if you haven't already, but I'll see you there.